morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. This is Brother West. This is Brother West coming to you um, once again, once again, uh, with another word of encouragement. Um, uh, if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, lay back down, lay back down, and ask God to talk to your heart. Ask God to change whatever it is that needs to be fixed that, that caused you to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Is that all right? I uh, I got a, I got two things that I want to say briefly. I don't uh, give me about five to six minutes. I uh, one of the things uh, that I want to say is uh, that God has been speaking to me about is um, forgiveness. Forgiveness. God wants us to forgive. God wants us to forgive. That's the only way that God can forgive us if we forgive. And just think about it. There there might be people that have done stuff to you. Might have um, done stuff that was so painful. But let them go. Let them go and forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. You know, give them extend mercy. That's that's the thing that's been that's the thing that's uh, that God is constantly speaking to my heart is mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall see God. And so and, and so God wants us to extend mercy because He's He extended a greater mercy to us. He extended grace, unmerited favor. And unmerited favor is something that we don't didn't deserve. God gave us something that we didn't deserve. It's called unmerited favor. Grace. He gave it to us as a gift. And if he can give us a gift when we didn't deserve it, we should do the same thing for our brothers and our sisters. Don't hold on to stuff. Don't hold on to, to hate. Don't hold on to hurt. Don't hold on to baggage because all that stuff, all that stuff we'll do is going to pull you down. That baggage, that hurt, all that stuff is going to pull you down. It's going to pull your mind down. It's going to pull your mentality down. And, and see, the more you entertain that kind of stuff, it's, it's seed. Those are voices. Negativity is voices. And what happens is eventually you're going to bear fruit. And your lifestyle is going to be nothing but negative. negative. You're going to create a whole world of negativity because you couldn't let go. You couldn't forgive. And see, in the, even in the danger with not forgiving, when you hold on to stuff, you run the risk when you keep holding on to stuff and don't let go and don't forgive. You run the risk of self exploding or things turning against you, turning within. Oftentimes when people hold on to stuff and bitterness and got hate down in their heart, they eventually develop sicknesses, develop diseases because you couldn't let go. You couldn't walk away. Life is life. One of, one of, one of the, uh, the first things that we need to learn that we have to teach our kids, they have to learn how to deal with rejection. You got to learn how to deal with when things don't go your way. That's life. That's life. Because there's going to come time when things don't go your way. Go your way. See, but in that rejection or in that failure, it should give you motivation to, to, to go harder, to strive harder, to reach farther. That's what it should be. Not to just sit there and lick your wounds and then worry about people feeling sorry for you. No. And so, and see, that's how I am. All of my life, I've been a fighter. And in that fight, that's all I know how to do, fight. And see, because I know what I got in it and I know my worth. And so I fight for, I fight for uh, what's in me. And I fight for what I believe in. And so that's why I come on all the time. That's why I talk about Jesus all the time. That's why I talk about you can make it all the time. That's why I talk about you can overcome. Because I believe in what I'm fighting for. Because I know in whom I believe. And I'm persuaded that he's able to commit or to keep that which I've given unto him, that I committed unto him against that day. So I trust him over my life. See, I don't have amnesia. I have memory of what God has brought me through and how God has blessed me. Even in bad and adverse conditions, how God favored me because I trusted him and because I was faithful. I was faithful to him according to his word. And so that's all it takes, being faithful to him. Because the scripture says, you are not going to lose nothing for the sake of the gospel. Nothing, nothing. And, and if anything that, that, that you perceive as being lost, it went yours anyway. It went worth value anyway. So, so trust God and don't let nothing, don't let nothing separate you from your relationship with God. God should be preeminent in everything you do. He should be the he should be the beacon. He should be the voice. 
He should be God and ruling everything you do. The scripture says in all your ways, acknowledge him. And so, and so if trouble is keep beating you in your face, it's because you hadn't acknowledged him. If you put him first, if you, if you ask him to lead you, if you ask him to help you, he will help you. But see, but you need to understand, he's not going to help you like you think that he's going to help you. How you perceive that he's going to help you. And so, see, oftentimes, his help comes to a form of pain, rejection. Solomon said wisdom and wisdom and knowledge come from sorrow and grief. And Solomon was one of, one of the, the, the wisest men on earth. And so, as, as well as the richest. And so... It's about being close to God, having a relationship with him. And so those are some of my words that I wanted to uh, just encourage you in. Just keep pushing. Keep pushing and forgive. See, because your forgiveness, your forgiveness is your liberty. Your forgiveness is your breakthrough. Your forgiveness is your healing. Stop holding on to stuff that you can't control. Stop holding on to stuff you can't fix. Some stuff you can't worry about. You got to trust God. You got to let God deal with it and keep your mouth off of it. See, because when you put your mouth on it, then you're attached to it. Then when you put your mouth on it, you just is guilty. You're just, a, so some stuff you got to let go of. And another thing, you cannot have your cake and eat it too. You cannot, you cannot serve God and, and, and love the world and listen to the world. You, can, you cannot say that you love God with your face, and, and with your face, with your mouth. But when God is calling you, your back and your heart is far from him. See, you need to understand that God is not a part-time lover. He's not a part-time lover. You can't, you can't just, you just can't spend two minutes with him and think he's going to bless you. You can't do it. You can't do it. And, and see, God knows your heart. And see, God, God knows your heart by your ways. He knows your heart by your fruit, how you act, how you treat people, how you talk, how you walk. That's what, that, that's what brings, that's what brings his blessings. That's what brings the choices blessing. When, 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 when you do what God says. And when you live according to what he says, that's when he blesses you. He says that the afflictions, he told Israel, the afflictions that I laid upon the Egyptians, I will not lay them upon them if you walk up right before me. Don't touch no unclean thing, but come at it. And touch me also don't think about. Don't have a conversation thereof or nothing like that. Is that all right? And another thing that I want to say, in Mark 3, 27, the scripture says, that the enemy cannot come into a, a, a strong man's house unless he first buying the strong man and spoil his goods. And what does that mean, buying the strong man? That means that, that, means that, that his mouth got tied. That means that and, and mouth getting tied or abilities or understanding. See, oftentimes we can get tied by being tricked. We can get tied by hurt, being hurt, by being betrayed. And see, see what ties us when we get stuck in, in, in the, the betrayal. What ties us when we get stuck in the hurt, when we stay there and we linger and, and we don't let go of it. And so as long as we hold on to it, we tied to it. As long as we hold on to the pain, we, we hold on to what they did, what she did. We tied to it, we bound. And, and so and that's how the enemy can get into your house. When you tie yourself to it, but when you separate yourself to it and, and separate and say, God, forgive me. God set me free. God forgive them. God set me free. God, I want to do something. God, I want to fight. God, but create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. You got to take it to God. And when you take it to God, God will break. God will break every band. He will break every spell. He will break every 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 snake. He will bruise the heel of every snake that will try to come into your your house. And so that's the way to bind them. That's the way. To not allow him to bind you, but to bind him by cutting him off, by cutting off the time, by cutting off the familiar conversation. That's what it is. Some stuff, the way you, you stop certain things is by cutting it off. If you got somebody, see, an argument happens when two people are talking. But if one person is talking, then somebody's just talking. And so, and so, but, but if you ain't talking, ain't no argument. The same thing with the enemy. Hey, don't, don't talk back to him. Cut him off. Cut him off. Stop talking to him. Uh, create a distraction. Go to the store. Uh, talk about Jesus. Whatever you do, because the scripture said, when the enemy comes down the flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against that enemy. And that standard is the word. We talked about the word the other day. The word. The word should be preeminent in your life, in your heart, in your mind. Because when you have the word in your heart, then you will not sin against God when you bury that word. When you bury that word deep down in your heart, 
God going to speak to you in every situation. And then you can apply the scripture when the scripture said that my sheep know my voice. And see, see, you'll know God's voice when you do what he say. When you're not doing what he's saying, then you're not of his. Simply. And people, and see, that's just like the children, well, people say we all God's children. No, we're not. We all are not God's children because they are children of darkness and they are the children of the light. And so the children of light follow light, which is Jesus, and the children of darkness follow darkness.